Lord Guru was sitting cross-legged on the side of a river with a band of his followers around him when suddenly the Guru saw a scorpion struggling in the moving water. So rising up to his feet, he waded into the river and placed his hand under the scorpion to lift it to safety. But the scorpion bit his hand and the Guru's knees buckled underneath him with pain. But he struggled onto the bank, but then the scorpion bit him again and he collapsed with the pain into a swoon. But when he recovered, the students around him said, Master, Master, why did you do that when you knew the scorpion would bite you? And the guru replied, the scorpion was merely being true to its nature as I am being true to mine. And there's a story of a young being who from an early age had been wandering the world, learning the ways of men. He'd not only learned what we would call the street smarts, but he'd learned the languages of the places that he'd been. But one day as he was on his travels, he saw an old hermit sitting by the edge of a stream, deeply engrossed in a book. And somehow the young being was compelled to go to sit beside this old hermit. And after they'd exchanged greetings, his curiosity got the better of him and he asked the hermit, what is it you're reading? And so the hermit passed the book over to the young being who looked at it and realized that he could not understand one word of what was written. Passed it back to the old hermit and the old hermit said, if you would like to learn the language of this book. Perhaps you would be willing to travel with me a while, which the young being readily agreed to do. So they set off on the road, but it soon came to evening time where they had to find a place to rest. But they saw what was a very palatial residence with lights on. So they went, and when the door was opened by the owner of the residence, they were invited in and given hospitality. The owner of the house very proudly took them around his residence, showing him the priceless things that he'd gathered, telling them their value and where they'd come from. And then he invited them to a sumptuous meal. The plates that they ate off were resting on solid gold platters. But after the meal, the young being noticed the old hermit slipping one of the golden platters into his robes. But he said nothing, just averting his eyes, and they took their leave. But the young being seemed to completely understand at some deep place within himself that this act was a life-changing experience for the owner of this house. So he did not question the old hermit about what he'd done. So they moved on 
And again, when evening came, they found another residence that was almost equally palacious. But when they knocked on the door and were greeted by the owner, a taciturn kind of a fellow, they were merely given dry bread and some stale cheese and a bottle of sour beer and given a place and straw out in the barn for the evening. But the next morning, when they were about to take their leave, the old hermit thanked the owner of the house profusely for his hospitality and even gave him the golden platter that he'd taken under his robe. But again, somehow in a deep place within the young man, he understood that this too was going to be a life-changing experience for the owner of this house. So he made no request of the old hermit as to why he'd done this. And so they moved on. And again that evening, looking for another place to stay, they came to a little inn run by an old widow. And they found that this old widow had taken in an orphan nephew to take care of. But uh, in being served the simple meal by the old widow, they noticed that the young man was surly, um, disrespectful, and quite rude. But they spent uh, a an evening at the inn, and the next morning, when they were about to take their leave, the old hermit asked the old widow, would she give her permission for her nephew to guide them to the main road, because the inn was a little bit out of the way. So the young man led the way, but it so happened that to reach the main road, they had to cross a deep chasm with a raging torrent tumbling over rocks below. And the only way across the chasm was by a very precarious rope bridge. Now the young man led the way, followed by the old hermit, and then the young being. But when they reached the middle of the rope bridge, it seemed from out of nowhere there came a great wind which blew the rope bridge from side to side so that the young man had to hold on for his very life. But as it happened, the young man, being full of bravado, refused to hold on, having crossed this bridge many times before. So the great wind blew him through the ropes, over the edge, into the deep chasm below. But it was noted by the young being that the old hermit made no attempt to save the young boy leaving him to his fate, thrown down into the deep chasm below. Suddenly, the wind abated as though it had never been. And when they reached the other side of the bridge, the old hermit turned to the young being and said, the witnessings that you have observed over these last days have allowed you to learn the language of the book. So now my work is finished and I can
her. And as the young being wilt, the old hermit transforms into a great field of light and disappeared entirely. So there are two questions that arises, arise from these stories. What is the difference between being true to our nature and what it is that is implied in the second story, the language of the book? In this place that we're exploring, is that place where we are when we no longer need to try? How would you answer these questions? What is the difference between the two, our true nature, and what it is that we experience in the place where we no longer need to try. Contrary to what I'm telling you this morning about my nephew, trying to help you, <laughs> and we know that really that people have to do their own thing, and um, trying to fix it for somebody can be a disaster. Yes, and the the things that that happen happen for a reason. Mm -hmm. Allows people to grow in their own journey. And yet, we know from the second story that the old hermit was instrumental in bringing about life changing experiences for those that they met. How do we reconcile? this and what we would perhaps know as our true nature or what we perceive as our true nature. Mm -hmm. I've actually been questioning my true nature lately because um, you know I always thought I was mm -hmm. I always presented as being quite conservative, quite even tempted. I feel like I'm outrageous. Well, <laughs> <laughs> I feel like I'm really. Yes. I can be an absolute devil. Yes. Absolutely. Absolutely. Hmm. What's the difference when we. No. <laughs> <laughs> and, I, and I 